In this video, I'd like to continue talking about graphing sinusoidal functions when we are given their equation. And the general approach to graphing these sinusoidal functions, either sine or cosine, is to first start with a parent function of either the sine or the cosine. And right here, you can see we have plotted, this is y is equal to the sine of x, the parent function for the sine function. And we know that it's the parent function for sine rather than cosine since it goes through the origin. When x is zero, the sine value is zero. And for the cosine, when x is zero, the cosine value of zero is at one. And we just need to recognize that sine and cosine are really the same curve, just shifted versions of each other. They are pi over two radians shifted from each other. But depending on what the function is here that we need to graph, that's the parent function we'd like to start with. So this is the sine of x. And the other main piece of information we need is what the general equation for a sinusoidal function looks like. So let me paste that in and we can discuss it. We have the equation y is equal to a multiplied by the sine or the cosine of b times x plus c all on the inside and then plus d on the outside. Where a or the absolute value of a gives us our amplitude. If a is negative, we get a reflection about the midline. b, this number multiplied by x, will tell us our period based on this formula. C will determine horizontal shifting, moving the entire curve to the left or to the right. And D, adding or subtracting on the outside, will move the function either up or down. It will change the equation of the midline. So if we can determine these parameters, then we can apply these transformations to this sinusoidal function here, this sine curve. And we can see that our a value in this case is simply one, since the coefficient on sine on the outside, this vertical scaling factor is just one. So if you don't see it, we can assume it's just one. The period would be twice pi over b, or the absolute value of b, and b is one half. So the absolute value of a half is still one half, and we're dividing by a fraction, which is the same as multiplying by that fraction flipped over. So we have a period of four pi, and it doesn't look like we have any horizontal shifting here, so our C value is zero, and our vertical shifting, our D value is eight. We are adding eight, meaning that the midline, or the equation for the midline is now Y is equal to eight, since for a parent function, the midline equation, the one that cuts the function in half, is y is equal to zero. So we just shift that up eight units. And once we know all of these parameters, we can now start applying these transformations. And I would recommend dealing with the shifting first. So let's move the midline up eight units. And we can draw that in. It would have a new midline at y equals eight. And we'll just have this line in as a reference point that we can use. Now the next step is to use our information about the amplitude. And the amplitude didn't change compared to our parent function. So when we shift this up, I use green, when we shift this up, this point going through the origin will not change. It will still go through the midline. So there will be a point right there. And we know our amplitude didn't change, so this is going to oscillate between a y value of nine and a y value of seven. But to figure out our next point, we need to consider this period here. Essentially, because this b value is a fraction, it will horizontally stretch the function out. In fact, since its period is twice the period of our parent function, the maximums will be twice as far apart, and likewise the minimums will be twice as far apart. Or in other words, if we look at the distance between a midline intersection and a maximum value, or at least the distance between their x values, it will now be twice as big. So the maximum will be double the distance from one of these midline intersections. So the new maximum will have this x value here of pi rather than pi over two. And likewise, the same thing would occur for the minimums. 
this minimum will be twice as far from this y-axis. It will now be at this x value of minus pi. So let's apply this to our shifted function up here. We know that since the maximum of the parent function is at pi over 2, and we essentially doubled the horizontal distance, we stretched it out by that factor of 2, since this is a fraction here, instead of the maximum being at pi over 2, it will now be at pi. So we can draw that in. At pi, we have a maximum, and we know the amplitude is 1 for that. Likewise, on the left half of the curve, we have a minimum value right here, and we now know it's going to be twice the distance away from this y-axis here, so it will have an x value of minus pi. So at minus pi right here, we have a minimum, which would be a y value of 7. And if we want, we can keep filling in points. We have this intersection with the midline, which notice is at pi units from this y-axis, but we are stretching everything by a factor of 2, so that intersection will be twice as far and will now be at 2 pi. And that should make sense that it goes through right here so that we have this nice symmetry. And likewise, on the left-hand side, this negative side, the this midline intersection for our parent function will now be stretched to negative 2 pi for its x value. So it will also go through here. And at this point, we can graph this curve. So let me quickly and carefully do that. And with this picture, we can check that the period is 4 pi. Since notice from this point to this point, it completes one unique oscillation, one period. And this is an x value of minus 2 pi, and this is positive 2 pi. So this horizontal distance from here to here would in fact be 4 pi. So the period does make sense. The amplitude we know is 1, which matches up with our a value, and it does have this midline value of y equals 8. But the other way to check this is to actually plot this using a graphing calculator or something like Desmos, just to make sure that our picture that we've drawn by hand actually matches up with the equation.